Hi guys and welcome to Fandom Newbie. My name is Shruti and today I'm going to be talking about some of my favorite reads of 2023. So these books that I'm going to be talking about are basically some of the most atmospheric, immersive books that I have read in 2023. And that's why I think that they are the best books for you guys to read if you want to develop the habit of reading again in 2024. I think that the beginning of the year is when we have the most motivation to like start reading or like develop the habit of reading. And so I feel that these books are the perfect place to start. So if you've been in a reading slump and you want to get out of it or you want to pick up your next book that is going to be extremely immersive and fun to read, then these are the books for you. So without further ado, let's just get started. Also, another thing that I've recently gotten into is doing a little bit of like digital scrapbooking. And so what I'm also going to do is while I'm talking about these books, I'm going to put up the sort of scrapbook pages that I've done for each of these books so that you guys know exactly what the vibe of this book is. And you can also decide from that if you want to read it or not. First up, we have Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. Now, this is such a cozy and warm fantasy story. And it's exactly what it says on the cover, which is high fantasy, low stakes, good company. Basically, this is set in an extremely fantastical world, which has a bunch of like fantasy creatures. So there are goblins, there are um fairies there are like ogres there are a bunch of different fantasy characters but our main character is viv who is an orc now orcs are supposed to be really like murderous characters that go on quests and like kill people so viv basically wants to give up that life and all she wants to do is start her own coffee shop and live a very quiet life from now on so that is literally what this book is about. It's about how Viv sets up her coffee shop and the people she meets along the way, the friendships and relationships that she builds along the way, and how she goes from this like murderous life to a slightly slow and very cozy, warm life. And if you like coffee shops, if you like very warm, Christmassy themed books. If you like books set in very like small towns uh, with quirky characters, then I feel you will absolutely love this book. This book is extremely beginner friendly and yeah, a very, very fun read. The next book that I want to talk about is Ahalya by Koral Dasgupta. Now, this is basically the story of Ahalya from the Ramayan. And what Koral Dasgupta has done in this book is that she's given Ahalya a voice to basically talk about the injustice that she faces. Um, this book is extremely beautifully written. The way that Koral Dasgupta has described nature in this book is exquisite. You, you can feel like the coolness of the river. You can feel the wind that Ahalya feels. You can feel like there's one character in this book which is literally just missed but the way that that that, that mist is described is just so enchanting and so beautiful. Hi guys, this is editing Shruti here jumping in because I realized that the camera didn't record a little bit of what I was saying about Ahalya. But what I wanted to mention again is that this book transports you into the forests and into the ashram that Ahalya is a part of. Um, it explores different themes of um, Ahalya's life. So it goes from her childhood right up until the moment she gets turned into a stone and then revived by Ram. Uh, but basically it follows um, the childish sort of exploratory parts of Ahalya that, you know, when she's like seeing the wilderness for the first time and seeing all of the natural um, like elements around her, that childish inquisitiveness that she has, it captures that really well. It also captures her becoming a woman and the thoughts of love and lust that she has. It speaks about that in a really, really beautiful way. And it also captures her confusion and anger when she is cursed and turned and turned into a stone, basically. So yeah, it just captures all elements of her life beautifully. So now I'm going to jump back to the video. <laughs> Next up, we have Whereabouts by Jhumpa Lahiri. Now, honestly, this book isn't about any specific thing. It basically follows the life of our female main character as 
she's going about her day to day life um, over the span of a year i guess and it talks about her relationships with her mother it talks about the different people who she runs into when she's at this like sitting at a cafe it talks about also some of the men in her life and yeah like it's quite mundane and not a lot happens but jhumpa lahiri's writing again is amazing there is one scene which is so vivid in my mind it it talks about the main character sitting at this cafe in the sun and i'm assuming that this that this book is set in italy and again like the way that that paragraph is written is that you can feel the warmth of the sun on your skin like i can't explain it it's just so so beautifully written i can't explain this book honestly it, it, it's one of the most mundane books that i've uh, that i've read it's like this book is about everything and it's also about nothing but it's just really really beautifully written the prose is just absolutely beautiful and yeah i fell in love with jhumpa lahiri's writing all over again when i read this book so if you're looking for something again that's just a little bit abstract like it really doesn't have much of a story but you want writing that you can just get lost in then i highly recommend whereabouts the next book that i want to talk about is the hacienda by isabel canyas this book is a gothic horror romance book and again it is super duper atmospheric it basically follows um our main character as she gets into a kind of marriage of convenience like she she gets married to this man who she doesn't really love but she does it for money and security and so she moves into this hacienda which is kind of like a mexican spanish mansion and this is basically set in mexico at the time of the mexican uh, war of independence like just after it and just also after the spanish inquisition that has happened in mexico and so uh, basically she moves into this mexican mansion and of course she finds it haunted so um if you have read rebecca by daphne du maurier and if you like the sort of atmosphere of that book then you will absolutely love uh the hacienda um the way that the haunting is described in this book is just chilling i remember reading it and i couldn't read it during the night because the way that the the house is described and the way that like the ghost haunting thing is described is just really really scary it's just one of those spooky eerie books that um might keep you awake at night but it's also just really really beautifully written with an amazing plot twist at the end that i didn't see coming so yeah definitely check out the hacienda the next book is bombay baljao by jane borges now this book is set in the neighborhood the catholic neighborhood in bombay called kavel and it talks about one particular family in that neighborhood in kavel through generations this book is extremely quirky it has really heartwarming stories it has sad stories it has funny stories it 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 follows the cutino family from like 1944 up until 2000 and something like 2010 i guess and so along with the evolution of the cutino family we also get the evolution of bombay and through that evolution i think it just paints a very vivid picture of the city you get to know all of the cultural um evolutions that bombay has gone through you also get to know that some of the political evolutions that bombay has gone through and it's just really really nicely written it's very simple perfect for beginners so yeah if you're looking for a good book about bombay then definitely check out bombay baljao by jane borges Next up we have the Guernsey Literary Potato Peel by Society and this book is that perfect book about books that I love. <laughs> I love reading books about books and book lovers and this book is literally about this secret book club that was set up in Guernsey during the German occupation of Guernsey during World War 2 
and the members of that book club. This book is written entirely in the form of letters and that made it just really, really fun to read. It also has a very beautiful romance at the center of it. And all of the characters in this book are basically book lovers. They love books, they love stories. And the entire reason why this, this society has come together is because they want to talk about books. It also talks about this part of history that I didn't really know much about. Like the English Channel Islands aren't spoken about a lot when it comes to World War II and um, that was the only part of England that was actually occupied by the Nazis and so yeah getting to read about that part of history and getting to read about the things that these people had to endure even what the soldiers like within the Nazi um, army camp what they had to endure in this um, during this occupation like everything about that part of history was also extremely interesting so yes if you're looking for a very good historical fiction with quirky characters who love reading books and also want to get insight about a moment of history during world war ii then definitely check out the guernsey literary potato peel pie society speaking of world war ii the next book is all the light we cannot see by anthony doerr this is another beautifully written book about war. I think like through the characters in this book, we get to experience different aspects of World War II. We get to see quite a few POVs in this book. The first is Marie Laure, who is a blind girl who lives in Paris with her father. But when Paris is occupied by the Nazis, uh, she flees and um, moves to this coastal town in France where she meets her uncle and the uncle's like house help basically and the other is Werner who is um who is like an orphan who lives in a very small village in Germany but then gets uh recruited by the Nazis into the army and then we also follow his journey and basically this book is about how the lives of Marie Lord and Werner kind of intertwine through different events that happen in their life and the really strange thing is at the center of this story is also this sort of like cursed diamond <laughs> and the story the legend about that cursed diamond that basically follows all of these characters lives the way that all of these really disparate storylines are woven together to form a story that is so empathetic and a story that really depicts the horrors of war from different povs is done in a beautiful way in this book so again if you're looking for a really good historical fiction um a book that deals with war in a very very empathetic manner then check out all the light we cannot see by anthony door next up we have the adventures of amina al sarafi by shannon chakraborty this is an amazing fantasy book it's about a female pirate who has basically gone into retirement but is pulled back for one last job. She is fierce, she is murderous, she is known throughout the Indian Ocean as the most badass female pirate ever. Like, you're, like people know not to mess with Amina al Sarafi. It is filled with like Middle Eastern mythology, it is filled with adventure and a lot of magic and fun the characters are again really funny and the banter between them is so so fun to read if you're looking for an amazing fantasy adventure um about a character who's honestly i think in her 40s and is also a mother so like basically like female characters that you don't really get to read about in books and also a book that is fiercely feminist if you're looking for that then definitely check out the adventures of amina al sarafi you will have a great time reading this book next up we have happy place by emily henry i spoke about this book in my last video um this book is pure like emily henry magic <laughs> um, it's an amazing love story it's a story of friendship it's a story of found family the basic theme that this book explores is how as you grow up the relationships and friendships in your life also evolve and the characters deal with that in this book in a really really heartwarming way i found so many themes in this book extremely relatable um, especially about finding your happy place and finding what it is that truly makes you happy um it was a beautiful book i really enjoyed reading it so if you're looking for a great romance and also a great book about friendship 
then definitely check this one out. Next up, we have Gallant by B. E. Schwab. Now, this is another gothic horror book and it follows our main character, Olivia Pryor, who lives in an orphanage. Um, she has basically been abandoned by her mother. She doesn't know who her father is. And the only thing she's left behind with is her mother's journal that talks about the family home Gallant with a warning that Olivia should never go back. Olivia suddenly gets a letter from a long lost uncle calling her back to Gallant. The orphanage sends her over there. And when she steps into the house, she realizes that creepy things are happening. She doesn't know a lot about her family's history. And as she finds out about it, she realizes that it's a lot more sinister than she thought. But what this book does really beautifully is at the core, it talks about what it means to be like a family, like what a family unit means, what it means to find a home where you belong. And through like the horror aspects of this book, I feel themes of home and family and love are explored in a really, really beautiful way. This book again is super atmospheric. The world that V.E. Schwab has built in this book is extremely creepy. It's just another beautiful story about family, about love, about finding yourself or the place that you belong in this world written through a very, very atmospheric, engaging horror story. Next up, we have Piranesi by Susanna Clark. This was a um, dark academia book that I read earlier in the year and I absolutely, absolutely loved it. This is one of the books that brought me out of my reading slump because it was just so weird. This book honestly is a little bit confusing. It's a little bit weird, but again, super atmospheric, super immersive. Um, this entire book is set in kind of like this labyrinth space that is full of like marble statues and um, in the basement of this like labyrinth house is a sea. Piranesi is the only person who lives in this house and basically what this book follows is we get to know why Piranesi has been brought to this house, how he is, how he came to be trapped in this house and um, why his life currently is threatened or is in danger because he is in that house. It is a very, very crazy story. It is slightly weird. Um, I didn't understand why this was dark academia until we get to like the middle point of this book. Uh, but I think like once we hit there, it's just such an intriguing tale. So if you're looking for a really strange, fun, weird, dark academia book, that is quite short and also a page turner, then definitely check out Piranesi. And lastly, I want to talk about Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. This book also I mentioned in my previous video and I absolutely fell in love with it and the world and the characters. This follows Emily Wilde as she is um, going on adventures around the world, uh, writing about her, writing about fairies basically for her encyclopedia. This current like section of um, Emily's adventures is set in a very small Scandinavian town um, that is perpetually cold and winters are extremely like crazy in this place. It snows all the time. It's very, very cold. And she's gone to investigate a, <coughs> sorry, a certain type of fairies who are extremely rare. And so the adventures that Emily goes on along the way, the friendships that she builds, um, there's like a blossoming love story in this book and how Emily deals with that. Like all of that is explored in this book. And what is interesting is that it's written in the form of um, journal entries. So essentially we're reading Emily's journal as she is documenting everything that she is noticing and everything that's, that is happening to her as she is carrying on this investigation. It is super heartwarming. The perfect winter cozy read. The love story is really amazing. So yeah, if you're looking for a very enchanting, um, whimsical, romantic fantasy, then definitely, definitely check out Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. So yeah, that is it for my video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a big fat thumbs up. If you've read any of these books, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. And also let me know what were your favorite books of 2023, which are the books that you absolutely loved because I'd love to get some recommendations. And of course, do subscribe to my channel if you like book videos like this. 
I'll see you guys next time. Bye.